Number 12 then from the 2018 Higher Maths Paper 2. The last question for seven marks here. But it's all little bits and pieces. So that's actually quite handy. Because what that means is they're leading you through this. And if you follow the steps, you should be able to do it okay. It's on circles. Now, I don't know why so many don't like circles. There's circles and logs. You can understand why you don't like logs. Because they're strange to you. But circles are such familiar shapes. And when you've got a diagram drawn for you here, you can visualise all the bits and pieces that you might need to be able to do. Anyway, what does it say? There are two circles. There's a smaller circle C1 with this equation in the squared form, the displaced form. There's a larger circle C2, that's its name, which is in the expanded form, which known as the general form. And what you have to do for the first mark is just state. Well, it doesn't say state, it says right down, but that just means state. State the coordinates of the centre of C1. Well, just write it down, you pick it out of the brackets. What's being subtracted? It's a 13 and it's a negative 4. Don't forget to put it in a bracket. And if you do that, you've got one of the marks. You don't need to name it, it's not asking for that, but I think it will give them names. You could borrow those names, that's what I usually do. I think I'll just go for different letters. See if I call that centre A and that centre B. I'll call that A. Not that it's needed, but it's just so I can reference it later on. Second part. The centre of C1, so that's that point I've called A, lies on the circumference of C2. If that's the case, what's this lurking unknown that was in C2 here? Show that that's negative 455. Well, it's only one mark as well. Well, what you should think of, first of all, is this. If A lies on that circle, then the coordinates of A must satisfy its equation, because that's what the equation is for. That's the rule for belonging. If your coordinates don't fit that, you don't get in. So it should be substitute that into that, and that'll just leave C, and you've got it for the mark. A longer way would be to say this. If A, which you know, lies in the centre, the circumference of this, and since you can get the centre of B from this, whoop, from this, that means you can work out its radius. Then, knowing its radius, you could use these three parts. Remember that square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. To equate that to the radius, thereby finding c. But that would be an awful lot of work for one mark. You could do it if you like, and if you did it, you'd get the mark. But you'd spend a lot of time. No, the simplest thing to say is, if this is meant to fit that equation, then pop it into it. 13 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 14 times back to the 13 minus 22 times, now it's the negative 4, plus the C equals 0. Now you can just type that all into your calculator because that's paper 2 after all. Hey, what have we got? 169 plus a 16, that's 14, so it's one more 13 than that, so that's 182, and that's plus because it's negative, negative. 88 plus C equals 0. I'd we'll probably take that lot into your calculator because you don't want to take a chance of getting it wrong. What have you got? You've got 10, 270, 286, adding on that 170, what, 456, take away 1, 455. Five. Just type it in your calculator, which means C is negative 455. Five. Even that's quite a bit of work. for that mark. Now B, the line joining the centres, that's the line I've drawn as BA, intersects the circle C1 at P. Determine the ratio in which P divides the line joining the centre. In other words, what's the ratio of this portion of the line to that portion of the line? Hence or otherwise, determine the coordinates of P. So you get four marks for finding what the coordinates of P are. Now, the ratio will come from, it's a distance, will come from distances. The relevant distances are the radius of the larger circle, the radius of the small circle. That ratio will be the ratio of what's left over of the big circle to what you've got for the radius of the small circle. So it's all about what are the radii. Now, you know these numbers, so I'll just put it down. So the radius of circle 1, whoops, that wasn't a 10, that was a 100, is equal to the square root of that, which is 10, 
The radius of circle 2 you'll have to extract from this equation now. So that's going to be that square root of the g squared plus f squared minus e. But remember, g and f are just the negatives of the centre. So it's the same as the centre squared minus c. And there's only four marks altogether. And there's only two marks just for getting the ratio. So this lot can't be worth much. So the centres, maybe I'll just put them down first of all over here. What's the centre? I'm calling this b. Maybe I should have put that down first of all. Quite often you do that. As soon as you get equations at the side, you write down what's the centre, what's the radius, in case you need them later. I should have done that first of all, maybe. So it's going to be what's been subtracted, but half it. So that's going to be a negative 7, and that will be the opposite sign, which is positive, but half it, 11. So in here, I'm going to pop, squaring those numbers, 49 plus 121, subtracting the number at the end, which is, happens to be negative, notice, I'll just show it that way. Subtracting, because that means it's actually going to add on to it. Now that's 170, and that's a plus. So that's 625, and it's 625 is one that you know. But you could just put it into your calculator. So that's going to be 25. So the last thing you need to know is what's this portion here. So R2 minus R1 is going to be 25 minus 10, which is 15. Now there's a mark just for working out these radii and the difference between them because there's only one mark left, and that's for stating the ratio. So that means the ratio... Now, it doesn't specify the ratio in any particular direction. So you can either say it's 15 to 10 or it's 10 to 15. The ratio is, I'll put it as 15 to 10, which should be cancelled down. Of course, they both divide by 5 to 3 to 2, and that's the other mark. Now, that was actually part 1, and there's a part 2. So what are the quarts of P? Well, there's several ways of doing that. You're finding a point that divides a line into a given a known ratio. So it's like three methods. You could use your section formula, you can use displacements, or you could use that business of the ratio of the vectors of the two parts and go through all that jiggery pokery until you end up with the section formula and then use the section formula. The simplest way is just to do displacements. That divides in the ratio of 3 to 2. It's 3 steps to here, and it's 2 steps to there. So P is 3 out of the 5 steps. It's 3 fifths of the way along that. So all you need to know is, what is the move that takes you from B to A? And do 3 fifths of it. Now to do that, you need to know the centre. Well, you effectively knew the centre anyway when you used that formula. And you're getting a mark for doing that. So that mark was really incorporated here. So that means there's only one mark left for getting the point P. So I'm going to put it down in a sort of vector form. To get to P, you'd start at B and add on three-fifths of BA. That's my method, but there's only one mark for this. Now, you don't need to set it all out, of course. You could just do it by inspection from here because your diagram, if you put one in the paper, would be sufficient justification. But I've done this, so I'm just going to put it down. But I'm just going to put the number straight off. So I'm starting at negative 7, 11, and I'm going to do three-fifths of, and you can just do this part by inspection. You're going from negative 7 to 13. So that's 20 along. You're going from 11 to negative 4. So that's 15 down. And then just put it down. I think after that, I would just stay at P. Because three-fifths of that is 12. So 12 onto negative 7 is 5. Three-fifths of that is negative 9, which makes that 2. P's at the point, 5, 2, for a mark. And if you wanted to write that as a section formula, then that would remember it's 1 over, add the two parts, that's 5. It's just the same as this, times... And it's 3 of the A and 2 of the B. So 3 of the A plus 2 of the B. And when you put that in, you end up with the same answer as this. Oh, I'll just put it down. So it's a fifth of... And I'm just going to multiply, because it's only one mark. I'm just going to multiply them up on the spot then. A was the 13, 15. So that's going to be a 39 minus 12. B was a negative 7, 11. So that's a minus 14 and 22. So that adds up to 10, divided by 5 is 2. That adds up to 25, divided by 5 is 5. Now, 
this little contentious last part. I notice in the marking scheme they just skim over it and state the, state the required equation with no comments. But I know perfectly well at the time that there was some confusion over the interpretation of this because there is a certain ambiguity that you could apply to this question. You shouldn't have questions that have got any sort of degree of ambiguity that depends on your level of skill in English. So in this case, what they meant was C2 had to touch C3. So this third circle had to be big enough. So it expands and engulfs the whole diagram like this. Now C2 is on the inside and touching C3 on the inside internally. Anyway, what's the equation of this one then? Well, you know it's centre. It centres at 5, 2. You need to figure out its radius. Now watch these distances. Those are the cancelled down distances I've put there. The radius of the larger one was 25. The portion of it left over there was 15, which makes that 40. So you just put that together. So C3 will be x minus 5 squared y minus 2 squared is the square of 40, which is 1600 for that mark.